Yo, 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 game devters in the house. Now let us animate the player because that is where we left in the previous video. So we are going to pick up from where we left. Now what you will see in the majority of tutorial is that people do this. So over here now they will create a private animator. So animator, call it anim, get the reference inside of the wake and animate it over here and so on and so forth. But that's not the way to go because Unity prefers that you do things Basically, for every task that you want, you will have a script for that. And what does that mean? Well, that means that we need to go over here inside of our player project or the player script that is. And over here, I'm going to right click and create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this one player animation. So a separate script that will handle the animations for the player instead of having all of that in the single script because the player walk is only handling the walk. And it should it can also handle the jump because that's part of the walk. But that's it. We are not going to add animations in there. Instead, we're going to create a separate class like this, as you can see over here. And over here is where we are going to add those animations. I'm going to remove all of this here. And what we are going to have is the private animator. So with one a private animator, I'm going to call this bad boy anim. And we're also going to have a private sprite renderer that I'm going to call sprite renderer. Renderer. There you go. So in the awake function, this is where I prefer to get the references to all of these, you know, that I am using. So here, what I'm going to do is we are going to say over here, anim is equal to get component, get the component animator component. There you go. And over here, our sprite render with lowercase s is equal to get the component sprite renderer component. There you go. Now bonus points if you know for what I am going to use the, you know, for what I'm going to use the sprite renderer. So go three, two, one bonus points. I'm going to give out cash for the people. No, I'm not going to give out cash. I don't have that much cash to give out. So <laughs> yeah, anyways, what is the next step? Well, the next step is to create animations. So we're going to have the walk animation. If you remember over here, going back inside of our editor. So going back, come on inside of the editor, inside of the over here animator. And if I hit the player, click on him, you will see that we have the walk animation over here, which or basically this is a parameter that we use. So in order to go from idle to walk over here, we need to set the walk to be greater than one. And over here, if we want to go from walk back to idle, then walk equals to one. These are parameters. So what I need to do here is create a public void play and over here I'm going to say play underscore walk animation and this is how I like to put it in my project. I'm not saying this is some naming convention yada 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 because I'm going to have multiple play functions. I'm going to have the play walk animation. I'm going to have the play jump animation. There you go. That's why the underscore over here so that I can differentiate them easily and because it takes a uh, integer parameter, I'm going to say here int walk. And what we need to say over here is we need to say anim dot set integer. And from here, the walk parameter name, which is this one and over here simply passing the walk parameter or this right here. So calling this walk over here set integer, if you don't know, it is going to refer to this parameter over here. Now the names need to match up. What does that mean? That basically means if you use capital W also here, you need to use capital W. If you use here lowercase W, it is not going to work because that parameter doesn't exist when it comes to unity. Also, one thing that I want to show you is how I like to do things. I don't like to hard code strings over here. So I don't like to do this because this is error prone and you can easily make a mistake. Just imagine if you're calling this walk animation in other places in your code and then you need to look where it is and so on and so forth. Instead, what I like to do is the following. I like to go here in the script and create a new folder for helper script. So helper scripts. There you go. And inside of that one, I'm going to right click and create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call tag manager with one a manager. And of course, double click this bad boy and open it here in Visual Studio and you know, do my thing and all of the good stuff. Let me just you know, na 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 I'm going to sing to you while I am doing this. If you don't want to wait every single day until I publish this whole tutorial series, you can access it right now in my Game Development Academy. Link is down below. You will access this tutorial series and 80 other courses where you can learn game development for Unity, Unreal Engine and so on and so forth.
Click the link down below and check it out. So basically, we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this. And over here, there's going to be a public static class. I like to put all my tags in a single class holding them. And over here, I can simply say public static string, and then I can say walk animation. So animation parameter, and that's going to be equal to walk like that. And then over here, I can have a public static string and this one is going to be the jump animation parameter. And over here we can say jump and there you go. So now we have created both of these parameters. And if you're wondering, what the hell is this teacher? I don't understand. Is this some kind of name? No, it's not. It's the parameter over here. Look at that. So walk and jump and there we go. So instead of calling it like this, we can simply say over here, tag manager walk animation parameter. Now somebody's going to say, but teacher, isn't it easier just to type walk instead of tag manager dot walk animation? And so, yes, it is easier, but as I said, that is error prone. Imagine you're calling that in 20 more places in your code. What if you misspell something? What if you type like this? What if you say, if you type, for example, like this, wackle instead of walk like that, or you type walk with lowercase w. There you go, you have a problem. But this way, if you see a problem, you just go and fix it over here. Maybe here you wrote walk, and then you go simply, you know, type with the capital W, and there you go, problem solved. There you go. So moving forward, we're also going to have over here a public void play underscore come on play underscore jump animation and this one is going to take a boolean so bull jump and we are going to perform the same thing except over here we're going to say anim sad bull and it's going to be the tag manager jump animation and passing here the jump and that's all there is to it of course jump animation we will see it later on do not worry about that that is totally unimportant for now just kidding it is important same as you know anything else in life Anyways, so let's go here inside of our editor or basically no, we cannot go still in the editor because we need to go over here inside of the player walk and this is where we're going to test things out because over here we're going to create a private player animation, player animation, as I'm going to call it or simply call it player anim shortcut and get that reference here in the awake. So our player anim is equal to get the component player animation component, which is the script. And now we are going to create, we're going to create a function right here that is going to handle the animation. So over here, I'm going to say void handle player animations. And this is simply going to have one line of code. We are going to call here player anim dot play the walk animation. And now what are we going to do? Because over here, if I go back in the editor, look at the walk. So when I click on the walk and click here on the on the transition, we set that we're going to go from idle to walk when the walk parameter is greater than one. And we're going to go back from walk to idle when that parameter is equal to zero. How can we do this? Well, there are multiple ways. One of the ways is to do this, simply go here. And over here, if we are moving, then we can pass here, you know, one over here. If we are moving, also pass here one. And over here, if we are not moving, we can, you know, pass zero. That is one of the ways how we can fix this. But instead of doing that in multiple, you know, places in our code, we can utilize the functionality of the rigid body. I block there for a second. So what we can do is we can use the my body dot velocity dot x. Now, of course, because this is not this will return a float, we need to convert it into an integer. So over here, I'm simply going to convert it into an integer. And this is called casting, basically. So it will convert this number here into an integer. If this is, let's say, for example, 1.7, it is going to convert it into two. If you don't know that, again, watch my basic C sharp tutorial series. And there you go. Now, also one thing that I want to mention over here that this velocity can be negative and it can be positive. I'm not going to, you can do that on your own. You can do something like debug.log and print out the velocity of the rigid body, but I don't want to waste time for that because you are impatient. Everybody's impatient on YouTube. I don't know why, like, I don't know, maybe people are some, you know, medicine or whatever. I'm not judging, but yeah, you get the point. Anyways, over here, 
this can be positive and it can be negative. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put this into an absolute value. So I'm going to say math f abs and this abs basically means absolute value. If you don't know, if you skipped first class math, absolute value is a positive number. So any number that we put here, it will return a positive number. If we put three, it will return three. If we put minus three, it will return three. If we put 300, it will return 300. And I have issues talking. If we put minus 300, it will again return 300. So no matter what number we put, it will simply return the positive of that number. And since this, it can be negative. So it can be a negative value. I'm going to use math f abs. Why am I using that? First of all, let me just call this here inside of the update because this is where we are going to call it. Now, the reason why I am using absolute value is because over here for the parameter we have set that if we want to play the idle, the walk needs to be greater than one. If we don't use that absolute value, then we will not be able to play the, we will not be able to play the walk when we go to the left side. And I'm going to show you that. First things first, I'm going to show you one thing and that is if I hit the play button, now we should see the player being animated. There you go, player is being animated. And, but we do have one problem. Look at that. As soon as I press the button, player is not animating right away. He's like sliding a little bit and then he's animating. When I release the button, you see the button was released and the player was still like a little bit, you know, walking. I don't know if you noticed that, but basically that is the issue here with these transitions because they have exit time and they have the transition duration. So what I'm going to do for every transition is uncheck the exit time and set the transition duration to zero. This is going to fix that problem. So going back over here, there you go. Going back over here. There you go, and over here. And basically, let me just first turn it off for all of these. There you go, like that. And over here, come on, turn it off. There you go, over here, turn it off, over here, turn it off. I believe we can see this if I turn it on. I can lower, so the transition duration was 0.25 over here, and over here it was one, and then over here 0.25. Why am I showing you this or what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the speed of this animation to 0.1 and set the speed of this animation to 0.1. We will return them, you know, later just so that I can show you that. So look at that. So now look, look at that. I have stopped, but look at the player's animation. Look at that. I have stopped. I, I'm not pressing anything. Look at, you see, he's in the place, but he's still animating. This is because of that transition duration. So I'm going to take the walk and set that to 0.5 over here. This one can be set to, you know, one. And I am going to, you know, again, remove the transition duration and all of that. If something is not clear when it comes to the transition transition duration, everything that what we did right now, make sure that you ask in the comment down below. So if I hit the play button, now if we move, there we go. And as soon as we stop, he stops moving. But you see, we're not facing the direction. Look at that. We are not facing the direction where we are moving. And this is where the sprite render comes. So bonus points for those of you who figured out for what we're going to use the sprite render, which is right here. We got a reference to the sprite render. So now over here, we're going to create a public void set facing direction, which takes an integer facing dir facing direction. There you go. And for this one, we're going to test if the facing direction is greater than zero, that means we are going to the right side. So we're going to say our sprite render flip X is false. And over here, if so else, if our facing direction is less than zero, that means we're facing the left side and going to the left side. So our sprite render flip X is going to be equal to true. There you go. Very, very simple. So if I go back and if you don't know what this flip X is, I'm quickly going to show you that. So if I select the player quickly, so clicking on the player, and if I go here, look at this in the sprite render component. So right here, look at that. So when I click here, I'm flipping him. You see, he's now flipping left and right. You can also flip him up and down. That is also doable, but not needed for this tutorial. So I'm going to go back and we're going to utilize again, the velocity of the rigid body. So we're going to call our player anim and we're going to set the facing direction by again, passing the my body velocity X, because this time we do need it as a 
not absolute value and over here I'm going to simply say int because we know over here what we just did if the parameter that we pass if it's greater than zero that means we're not flipping that sprite render if it's lower than zero then we are flipping that sprite render what does this mean is that if we're going to the left side this value is going to be the negative side so actually it's going to have a negative value and thus it is going to as you can see flip the player to the left side simple simple very very simple so if i go back in my editorial, in my editor, and hit the play button, you will notice now when we move left and right, and we are going to see all of that, so come on, there you go, look at that. So you see now what is happening? So look at how we are facing all the directions and everything, and so on and so forth, so we're moving left, looking the left side, moving right, looking the right side, and I'm just going to quickly show you, if I don't use the absolute value over here, so I'm simply going to comment this, and copy it and paste it and over here I am going to remove the absolute value and there you go and if I go back you will notice now that the animation will not play the walk animation will not play when we move to the left side and I'm trying to help you understand the logic be behind that so I'm going to the right it's animating I'm going to the left it's not animating look at that the reason why it's not animating because the walk parameter needs to be greater than one it needs to have a value greater than one in order for this animation transition to work. So to go from idle to walk, there you go. So when we move to the left side, we are not, this value is not going to be greater than one because we're using the velocity of X. And if we go to the left side, then it's the negative side and there you go. And that is why we need to use the absolute value over here. So there you go, very simple way with two lines of code, well, basically two lines of code in the player walk, but over here, some multiple lines of code in order to animate the player. If something is not clear when it comes to animation, how I utilize this, what is velocity or how we utilize the velocity and all that good stuff, make sure that you ask in the comment down below this video and I will help you out. I will try to help everybody out, but of course, if these videos blow up and get gazillion views, which never happens with me. I will not be able to help a thousand people. So I expect all of you to contribute and help each other out. And basically that would be it. Hit the like button, subscribe if you like, if you want to see more, I will, you know, see you tomorrow in the new video, all of the good stuff. See ya and take care.